Hello, this is Vern. And if you've gone through a divorce, but still feel hopeful that healthy, fulfilling, passionate love is possible, and maybe you're scared as to what your next best step is or are confused as to how to get started, in today's video, I'm going to demystify what it really takes for you to attract the best love you've ever had in your life after divorce without shame or anxiety. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Listen, if you've gone through something as painful as a divorce, and maybe it was something that you saw, you saw coming, and maybe throughout the years you knew this would eventually happen, but maybe you didn't. Maybe the rug was pulled down from under you. Maybe you were caught off guard. Maybe you felt like your life was going in one way and you metaphorically crashed against a glass door that you couldn't even imagine and you had to start over. One of the most powerful analogies that can help you to navigate this process and the next seven steps that I'm about to outline to you so you can really get the most evolved, the most conscious, and the most fulfilling type of love, even if you haven't had gotten it before, is to understand that this is your second act. And let me redefine second act so that you understand what I mean by it. Any movie worth watching, any novel worth reading, any play worth sitting through involves two different parts. The first part, which is where everything is great, the scene is set, uh, things are going according to plan, and then the second act, which is where shit hits the fan, metaphorically speaking, where the harrowing of the story maybe loses sight of who she is. Maybe she's betrayed. Maybe she is neglected. Maybe she's disrespected. Maybe she has financial, emotional, and psychological challenges that she has to overcome. Maybe the friends that were supposed to be by her side take sides with him and leave her hanging. Maybe she finds that her children are suffering the consequences of this divorce, but needs to find a way to be strong for them and in doing so becomes a better human being. The second act is where the juice in life is, where the juice in any movie is, because the second act is where she finds her voice again. The second act is where she learns how to trust herself. Second act is where she understands that she's worthy and valuable, where she starts to be respected in a way that she wasn't before, where she starts re-emerging as a human being who is passionate and fulfilling and has bigger goals than what she ever dreamed of before, not in spite of what happened, but because of it. This, my friend, is called true alchemy, the ability to turn shit into gold. And you have that capacity inside of you, but it starts with a mindset. Many of the steps that I'll be outlining right now are not the most common steps that maybe other people would share, but the psychology behind how you do things, the spirit behind it is 90% of the work. And that's what I want you to understand right now. The first step you need to step into if you want to go from overcoming a divorce to finding the epic love that you've always wanted for in your life. Take some time to find yourself again. Take some time to reemerge, find your voice, and come out with a stronger expression of you that perhaps was taking place before. And what are simple ways to do this? Well, I mean, take some time before you step into the next relationship to start figuring out who is this long lost girl who was dreaming about castles, who was dreaming about becoming an astronaut when she was growing up and forgot it and then started going for what she thought she could get instead of what she really wanted? What are some of the things that make you feel joyous and alive and connected to your spirit? Maybe it's singing, maybe it's dancing, maybe it's volunteering, maybe it's knitting, maybe it's playing the guitar. <laughs> Whatever that is for you, you need to start finding moments in your day where you can step into that part of you that moves you from inside and radiates a different type of energy. An energy that says, I'm happy. An energy that says, I overcome the challenges of life. An energy that says, even though life can be very green, the moment you turn on a candle on the darkest of caves, it no longer is dark. There's a hint of light. There's the light at the end of the tunnel. And that light at the end of the tunnel is you. It comes from within. It comes from how you view life and how you choose to start doing things that connect you to 
greatness and to a bigger expression of your own voice. If you say, you know what, Bern, you don't understand my situation because of what happened. I'm having financial troubles and I'm working so hard. And on top of that, I have my children most of the time and all these demands in life. So here's what I have to say to you. If you cannot find five minutes for yourself in this lifetime, you don't have a life. You're living in reaction and you're living in prison. So I contend that you always can find five minutes a day to start doing something you feel absolutely passionate about. And it is within your birthright, but also it's a big responsibility to have people around you that depend on you. So the more you can feed yourself in a healthy way, the more you'll be able to break free from because at the end of the day, every single step that I'm outlining right now can be done from an energy of hope and inspiration and progression and movement or just checking a box that means you probably aren't getting it <laughs> you're probably just going through the motions in life and not really understanding and I understand challenges I understand frustration I understand fear and this is something that was going to start giving you the energy the spark to have the momentum you need to follow through step number two learn to redefine failure and let go of shame here's why because you may have been married for 10 years so maybe it was a horrible marriage all throughout, but maybe you had really good moments. Maybe that marriage produced incredible children. Maybe that marriage produced a group of friends that some of whom are still your friends right now. But the way society looks at life is a black or white, on or off, binary switch that says, oh, it didn't last 50 years then, it was a failure. And I'm imploring to you right now that you stop looking at what took place as a failure but you understand there were many tonalities and shades of different colors and it was much more than a failure. Maybe it was successful in many different ways, but yeah, it didn't stand the test of the ultimate time, but 10 years is not nothing. So I want you to, as you start thinking about feeling shame that you didn't succeed, maybe your family has strong expectations of you, maybe your friends, maybe your church has strong expectations of you. And I, what I want you to understand is as you look back that you did the absolute best you could this thought will change your life. If you could have done better, my dear, you would have. Maybe you understood it, but you still didn't have the strength to act on it. And because you didn't act on it, it means you, didn't, you really couldn't have done better at that moment. That's the best you could do. But here's the kicker. Now that you understand matter, better, now that you've suffered through it, now that you have maybe more skills, maybe a deeper understanding or wisdom, then you can do better. So stop telling yourself that it was a failure. Start understanding that there's several gifts that came through and as a result of that marriage and that they'll continue bearing fruits for the rest of your life if you're conscious about it. And as you start feeling ashamed of maybe it didn't last or maybe whatever happened was something that is not accepted societally, understand that each human being who's judging you has their own shit that they're not sharing with you. So just know that you're not alone in this. Every human being, myself included, have things that we feel horrible about and the true task of someone who wants to evolve is saying, how can I do better next time? And that's my invitation to you, that you stop blaming yourself for what you didn't do and you start understanding that you can now make decisions that will make your future vastly different from what you experienced in the past. Step number three, and this is one of the best ones, of, if you take nothing else from this video, but this one, it was worth your time watching, which is find the spiritual gift in what took place. Here's the thing, it's so easy to find a gift when it's presented in the best wrapping when the day's sunny and shining and there's uh, great food on the table and everybody's healthy it's easy to feel grateful when things are going your way it's really hard when you have to really pull into the deepest part of yourself to find the gift or the gem in something to find that diamond inside that piece of coal that's being sculpted by pressure so finding the spiritual gift means that you understand that there's parts of you Maybe you learn as a result of the way he mistreated you to have a stronger voice. Not that you would wish that upon anyone or that you've put yourself through it again, but the fact that it happened can make you a more conscious being, a stronger being, someone who has a, a voice that doesn't allow others in the future to take advantage of her. He did the best he could in that moment and I did the best I could and now I do better and that doesn't mean you need to connect with them. That doesn't mean you need to establish a friendship with them. It just means that you can let go of the pain in your heart because you're focused mostly on what's ahead and the lessons that you learn and your own part in the equation. Now, the second thing that's going to make you able to forgive him is the hardest thing of this, <laughs> of this equation, which is forgiving yourself. 
right? Because so many women who can't forgive their exes haven't forgiven themselves for, maybe they're saying to themselves, I can't believe I was so fill in the blank, stupid. I can't believe I was so gullible. I can't believe I was so naive. But if you understand right now, as I shared earlier, that you did the best you could and that you're learning and part of the process of growth is going through painful experiences, you will only grow in direct proportion to the demands that life pulls out of you. Most human beings, and I include myself in this category, don't usually volunteer for growth that's uncomfortable just for fun. But if something is in front of you and you either change or go down, then you have to change. And maybe in some in, in, in part of the, part of this process is you learning how to change as a result of what took place. Again, you're not justifying his behavior, you're not saying it's okay, but you're smarter than what took place and you're more valuable than someone who is going to be stopped at every turn in her life because she's focused on the rearview mirror of the past while driving forward to the future. Step number five, and this is where it starts getting fun, is stroking the fire. And that means rekindling the truth of what you seek and crave in a relationship. Then stroking the fire means imagining vividly what is it that you really want. Not based on what you think you can get, but based on what's possible. So I'm asking you right now, if you really want to find epic love, that you don't just hold on to the idea of this is what I've had in the past, so this is what I can get in the future, but that you go big, that you go for what you really, really want. Doesn't mean that you don't have to create some changes or, or strategize how to get it, because that's part of it. But if you focus on something, a mediocre goal, mediocre kind of love, you're gonna throw in the towel because it's challenging to get it. I'm the first one to say right now, you wanna find epic love, it's gonna be hard, but it's doable. And the thing that makes it possible is to be strongly connected to a why, something that makes this path, this Everest you're about to climb, this ultra marathon you're about to get into, doable because you know it's worth it. Step number six, <laughs> you need to develop a conscious dating strategy. Now that we've gone through the psychological part of this, without which the dating strategy will not work because you're gonna find yourself either still too angry about what took place or maybe too scared to take action, too scared to open up and be vulnerable, too disconnected from your truth. When you handle that piece, then the next step is to create a conscious dating strategy that allows you to, number one, meet more men that you're meeting right now. Number two, have a stronger magnet when you connect with them so that they are more compelled to connect with you. Number three, have a stronger mechanism to vet them and make sure that they're not wasting your time but they're headed to the same destination. Now, I, I don't have enough time in this video to go through all of that, but one thing I do offer you right now, if you go to the first link in the description of this video, you're gonna find a free class that I created you. I mean, click on that link, you'll see a page that looks like this, and you can go through my free training to understand how to create a strong conscious dating strategy that will land you in the eyes and hearts of many more conscious men than you have connection with right now. So that's free for you. You can do it at the end of this video or you can do it now. And, uh, and it will guide you through the steps of getting that process going. <laughs> the last step is, there's two ways of going about it in life. One is getting to the 10 year plan or the five year plan. The other one is to find what are the shortcuts. And there are shortcuts that can help you to experience the love that you want closer to now than just in the future. You can throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. You can try to rediscover fire or rediscover the wheel, or you can connect to a wheel that already works and improve on it. And that's my recommendation. So cut down the time by getting support. And there's multiple ways of getting support. One is pretty clear. You're getting it right now. This is a free form of support. There's many YouTube videos. I have hundreds of videos on my channel. Feel free to explore them. Uh, there's other creators who uh, have content that might help you. There are books out there. There's e-programs. There's therapy. And then there's coaching, hand-holding, and help that can help you cut down the time and make this happen in a fraction of the time. So if you are investing your time and energy, invest some time, energy, and cash into getting some level of support. That's how I'll end this video. I hope this has been helpful, useful, and insightful to you. And if it is, I'm gonna ask you to do one single thing. Again, go back to the first link in the description of this video to watch my free masterclass so you can create a conscious dating strategy. If you enjoy this video, click like or thumbs up, share it with a friend, and even better, if you dare to be courageous enough, share it with me in a comment what was the biggest takeaway that you got from this video. And I'll just say the last thing, last but not least, if you want my hand holding, my guidance, my accountability, my uh, helping you to get this result in a fraction of the time, second link in the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me. 
Thank you so much for connecting with me and for allowing me into your heart, into your phone, into your life. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life. Maybe in the process of this divorce or this marriage, you learn how to love yourself in action. Maybe you learned how to speak your truth. Maybe you learn how to ask for what you need. So if it's really hard to feel both extremely upset about what took place and extremely grateful about the gifts that only came as a result of what happened. So if you start thinking who I am right now and my understanding and my wisdom came, not in spite, but because of what took place, then you can be more connected to the gift than to the pain and you can start letting go, which leads me to my next step, which is you need to be able to forgive him and forgive yourself. And here's what I mean. It's really hard for you to find new epic love when your heart is still deeply connected with an umbilical cord with a sense of pain to what took place. Now, and here's the two biggest lessons that I've understood in life that make this possible. The first lesson that allows you to forgive him is the realization that you're not forgiving him for him. You're forgiving him to liberate yourself and to be set free. You're doing this as an act of self-freedom, not as an act of approving of what took place. Forgiving him doesn't mean that you say what happened was cool. It just means that you no longer are hostage to a sense of pain that will keep on giving you shitty fruits for the rest of your life. So you say, you know what? I hate what happened, 